Hello and welcome. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Tonight, police vow to clamp down on masterminds of planned revolution march in the country. Say action amounts to treason as DSS arrests former AAC presidential candidate Omoye Leshawore over protest move. Police in Ogu State confirmed the rescue of five persons kidnapped on the Shagamu Bilin Expressway as one of the victims recounts experience. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo calls for a genuine dialogue on the farmer herders crisis in the country as he meets with representatives of the Fulani community in the southwest in Abelkuta, Ogun State. And Sudan's military rulers and main opposition coalition reach agreement to pave way for a new transitional government following the intervention of the African Union. On business news tonight, Nigeria Forex reserves drops to $44.9 billion in one week amid central banks' sustained intervention at the interbank market. On sports news tonight, Red Bull's Max Verstappen secures first ever Formula One pole position in a thrilling qualifying session at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Police authorities are talking tough about the planned protests by the publisher of online newspaper Sahara Reporters and presidential candidate of the African Action Congress in the February 23rd presidential election, Mr. Omoyeli Showare, and members of his group. The police says a video circulated on social media by the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria and others calling on Nigerians to join the planned revolution march against the federal government on August the 5th amounts to treasonable felony. The police spokesperson, Mr. Frank Mba, explains that the planned action is aimed at forcing a regime change in the country. He says, and I quote, The force wishes to state that the core amounts to treasonable felony and acts of terrorism and will therefore not stand idly by and watch any individual or group in the society cause anarchy in the land. While acknowledging the rights of Nigerians to embark on protests, the force wishes to note that such rights should not translate to a violent and forceful change of government, which clearly is the meaning of revolution. End of quote. The police maintains that Nigeria is a democratic country with well-defined processes for change of government and warns that those it describes as organizers, sponsors, allies, supporters, associates and sympathizers of the Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria to avoid any of such planned protests an act of incitement. The decision by the police comes as news broke on the arrest of Mr. Shoure this morning by the Department of State Services, DSS. Now, he was said to have been picked up at his apartment this morning by the DSS, and he made this known via his verified Twitter handle at about 1.25 a.m. A minute after, the former presidential candidate tweeted JAP, which according to his news platform, confirms his phone must have been seized while trying to raise an alarm about his arrest. The news website added that its publisher's arrest was not unconnected to hashtag revolution now, a series of planned protests against bad governance in the country scheduled to take place on Monday, August the 5th. Mr. Shawere lost his bid to become Nigeria's president in the February 23rd 2019 presidential election after he lost to the incumbent president, Muhammadu Buhari. Meanwhile, members of his group, also known as the Third Force Movement, are insisting on going ahead with the protest, despite the warning by the police. Meanwhile, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and some prominent Nigerians have condemned his arrest. Mr. Abubakar took to his Twitter handle this morning to call for Mr. Shawarez's release hours after he was picked up by DSS operatives. The PDP presidential candidate says, and I quote, freedom of speech is not only constitutionally guaranteed, it is the substructure of our democracy. These kidnappings in the guise of arrest stands condemned, end of quote. Meanwhile, the convener of the Bring Back Our Girls movement and former presidential candidate, Mrs. Obi Ezekwisili, also tweeted saying, all well-meaning Nigerians should stand with at Yele Shore and defend his constitutional right and freedom to protest any matter of governance that worries him.
Mr. Chouret's convening of citizens to protest poor governance via hashtag revolution now is constitutionally guaranteed, end of quote. And for the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, its tweet strongly condemns what it calls, and I quote, the arbitrary arrest of opposition leader and activist at Yelisha Warreb by the DSS. The Nigerian authorities should immediately and unconditionally release him. Shawarez's unconditional release will be a first step to stop Nigeria's human rights slide. End of quote. While civil rights activist of the victims who is a woman that is a member of the redeemed Christian Church of God. The five persons were abducted while traveling from the eastern part of the country when the commercial bus they were traveling in was blocked around 3 a.m. by gunmen at a location between Ondo and Ogun State. One of the victims and the state police commissioner speak on the incident. I was manhandled, I was ruffled, I was tortured. Name it. It's, 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 it's horrible where this country is driving at. It's horrible because these gentlemen shot for like one hour on the road until policemen arrived and they ran away. And they took us inside the bush from Thursday to this morning. And, that, well, I want to use the opportunity to um, appreciate the police because the pressure they gave them led into them letting us go. Because if there was no pressure, they would have had a field day. Why am I saying this? Because when we were held there, we were put in a swamp. We slept in a swamp with all manner of insects and reptiles. And we were moving us, we moved like 30 kilometers inside the jungle where nobody has traded upon. They were comfortable there. They had very dangerous firepower. Ammunitions, name it. They had sacks and sacks of life ammunitions. But the moment we saw police uh, helicopter that descended very low, right above our heads, the criminals, um, the kidnappers, took to their heels and hit at some point, and they started becoming, uh, they started being erratic. With uh, all the deployments we had, massively and supported by the local vigilante and local uh, hunters. The helicopter didn't stop its own. Was, we still had air surveillance that was uh, massively and thoroughly conducted around the bushes, taking coordinates and geolocations. Well, as God will have it this morning, the first victim who is the woman was rescued very early this morning and she has since joined her family at the redeemed uh, church of god the remaining four men uh, the search continued for them the pressure was mounted the policemen lined up all through and again as god will have it they were equally rescued on hot. That is to say, the five persons that were kidnapped were all rescued on hot. Staying with security stories, this time in Kaduna State, armed men suspected to be kidnappers have abducted a university lecturer identified as Mr. Abubakar Idris. Police say the victim is a lecturer at the Federal University, Dunsima, in Kasuna State, and was abducted on Friday night at his residence in Baranawa area of Kaduna South local government area. The command's public relations officer explains that after an investigation was conducted, they discovered that Mr. Idris was likely to have been trailed by the hoodlums while he was returning home. He was said to have been forced into their car, after which they zoomed off to an unknown location. The police say efforts are ongoing to rescue the victim. Meanwhile, the killers of the Catholic priest in Enugu State, Reverend Father Paul Ofu, may be in for more trouble as the president had ordered a manhunt for the killers. The president condemned the attack, describing it as barbaric and unnecessary, adding that his administration will step up the fight against lawlessness and recklessness. He also condoled with the parishioners and family of the slain priest, assuring them that the killers will be brought to justice. The murder of the priest had sparked a protest by Catholic priests in Enugu State, which moved out to the office of the state governor to vent their grievances.
The recurring clashes between farmers and herders is also a cause of concern, and that is why representatives of the Fulani communities in the southwest, including Kwara and Kogi State, have decided to meet with former President Olusegun Obasanjo to seek solutions to this problem. The group called Gan Alla Fulani Development Association of Nigeria met with the former president at his hilltop home in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital. They blamed the current security situation partly on the alleged inability to reach security operatives to air their grievances and those gaining from the situation. Farmer hardness has caused a lot of problems in this country. Farmers have lost their means of livelihood. Hatsmen have lost their means of livelihood because they are all perishables. And also, that snowballed into Katuro Slim because those who didn't have or who were left with nothing saw those who were still having some and they went after them. When the Katuru were no longer there to be rustled, or the owners of the cows went for AK-47 to protect the cows, some of their mischievous children took the AK-47s and started either getting uh, engaged as uh, assassins or uh, cattle rustlers or kidnappers. Today the thing has gone into kidnapping from harder farmers. Today you can hardly even hear of the farmer had that expression because most of the cows have been depleted by about almost 35 percent. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo has recommended genuine dialogue and constant discussions as part of the measures capable of resolving the current security situation between farmers and herders in the country. He, however, asked the leaders to take the message of peace and cordial relationship to their people. We want to interrogate ourselves. Why is this? How is this? When is this? These are things we want to do. We want to move Nigeria forward, irrespective of tribe, religion, uh, ethnicity, uh, trade, profession, uh, where I come from, where you come from. How can we together move Nigeria forward? That's what we are talking about. We want to have peace. We want to have security. We want to have harmony. We want to have wholesomeness. And we want to have progress. How can we have this? In part two, after the break, four people killed as flood ravages Adamawa State Capital Yola. Property worth millions damaged as state government calls on the federal government to intervene. That's in a moment. Join us again.